Stonewalling is a great way to put up a stone wall between you and somebody that you don't want to communicate with. You certainly don't have to be a narcissist in order to stonewall somebody. Lots of people stonewall people that they aren't comfortable communicating with or they aren't comfortable being vulnerable with. It's a pretty immature way to handle the fear of expressing your own emotions. And narcissists almost always use this method in order to avoid communication. And almost all narcissists stonewall on a regular basis. In this video, I'm going to go over several methods that narcissists use to stonewall other people so it can help you protect yourself emotionally from this very powerful manipulation tactic. Welcome to Looking Behind the Mirror, where we explore narcissism and take our lives back as we make sense out of nonsense. As a quick disclaimer, everything I say is based on my opinions and my personal experiences. I'm not a professional, and if you're really struggling, I encourage you to seek professional help. I'm providing links below for you. This subject was suggested by one of my listeners, and I thought it was a great idea because I've never really done a video on stonewalling, and it really made me sit down and think about different ways that narcissists stonewall people and why they do this. Stonewalling is a very broad topic because there's a million different ways to stonewall somebody, but stonewalling is basically a way to cut off communication, to stop somebody from asking questions, to, to refuse to answer somebody's questions, a refusal to communicate, really. And there's a million different ways that narcissists can do this. And of course, they do this because they don't want to communicate. Genuine, honest communication with a narcissist would almost always result in you realizing that this person is using you and exploiting you and just getting anything they can out of you with no regard of your welfare. And that wouldn't really serve the narcissist's interests. So communication does not serve the narcissist's interests. And that's why they use any tactic they can to avoid communication, including stonewalling. One reason I thought this video was really important is if we're in a narcissistic relationship for long enough, we can become conditioned and trained basically to just accept this and to not even see it for what it is. We could be conditioned to start to believe that when we're trying to ask questions or we're trying to be heard or we're trying to have a two-way conversation that we're actually being a bother we're being a burden, we're being selfish, we're acting like we're ungrateful. We can be trained to start to believe that holding back what we really think and not trying to communicate anything negative is somehow doing a favor to the relationship. Like we're a strong person if we can just keep everything to ourselves. Like we're doing our partner a favor if we just don't burden him or her with our problems. And narcissists really want us to believe this. And bonus points if the negative emotions you might want to talk about are a result of the narcissist's abusive behavior and you start to think that trying to express these negative emotions you have is somehow your failing, like you're a bad person for trying to communicate with the narcissist the horrible ways that they're making you feel. So let's just begin by making it clear that when you're in a relationship with anybody, it could be a friendship, a romantic relationship, a familial relationship, any kind of relationship, there is nothing wrong with trying to communicate. And there's nothing wrong with trying to express to someone ways that their behavior may be troubling to you. You know, if you do it in a thoughtful, mature way. There's nothing wrong with expressing true concerns that you have that are actually affecting you, things that are affecting the relationship. In healthy relationships, we should be able to express these things to each other in order to strengthen the relationship. But of course, in a narcissistic relationship, this is just never how it works because a narcissistic relationship is not healthy and is not conducive to honest communication. But when you are expressing your true feelings about something, you are not being a burden. You are not being selfish. You're not being weak. 
you're just a human being trying to communicate with somebody else that you're trying to build a healthy relationship with. And there's nothing wrong with that. Narcissists would love for you to believe that, that, that there's something wrong with that, that you're selfish, you're bad, you're causing trouble if you're trying to communicate. And that's one way they train you to just shut up and stop asking questions and just pretend everything's fine is by making you feel like you're doing something wrong by responding in a normal way to abusive behavior. So what exactly does stonewalling look like? Now, stonewalling could be confused with gaslighting or the silent treatment because Gaslighting could be a way to stonewall somebody, and the silent treatment could also be a way to stonewall somebody. But there are many different other ways to stonewall somebody, so let's just go over them. One that I've experienced, I think the most in my life, is just intimidation. A narcissist or otherwise toxic, abusive person can really make you feel intimidated make you feel like it's not worth trying to bring your grievances up. It's not worth trying to communicate. Maybe you actually feel th physically threatened by this person, but even if you're not in physical danger, just the fear of the emotional reaction that you might get out of trying to communicate. There, there are a lot of different ways that narcissists can intimidate you. They could just make you believe that they're superior to you. You could just be afraid that if you try to bring up any of your feelings, they're going to bring out all these tools that they've built to make you feel unimportant, to make you feel invalidated, or to make you feel like you're being silly. And that can be scary enough. Talking about your actual feelings with anyone can be intimidating just by itself. You don't have to be communicating with a toxic, narcissistic person. Just being honest about how you feel is already intimidating enough for most people. And when you pair that with somebody that's already conditioned you to understand that when you try to communicate with that person, they may use your most vulnerable feelings and experiences to cut you down. They could emotionally really hurt you with anything you tell them. And, and this is a really great, great way for them to train you to just keep your mouth shut and keep things to yourself is intimidation. And they can build this intimidation by maybe if you bring up grievances, maybe they could say something like, well, why don't you just leave then? Or doing what I would call a reverse ultimatum. If you start talking to them about how an action that they've done has hurt your feelings, they could do a reverse ultimatum and say, if you if you ever talk about that again, then I'm going to leave you or, or something like that, where it's actually being flipped around on you and you're being threatened that if you ever try to communicate with this person again, something terrible is going to happen. Another way to stonewall somebody would just be to lie. Um, I think a really common way that people, even people that are not narcissists will, will use to stonewall is to say, I'm fine when they're obviously very upset and somebody asks them, are you mad? No, I'm not mad. I'm fine. <laughs> this is a lie, right? And it's a pretty common one. I think a, a lot of us have known people that have done this and a lot of us have probably done this ourselves. So it's a little bit benign, but it's a way to stonewall. It's a way to refuse to communicate with somebody that's trying to communicate with us. And for narcissists, they're going to take this to a whole new level. If they seem really angry with you, for instance, and you ask them if they're upset, they might say something like, no, I'm not angry. Why? Are, are you angry? You seem like you're the one that's actually really angry here. Just <laughs> flipping it around on you and completely changing the narrative and lying to you about how they actually feel because they're obviously angry. Or they may lie about what you're trying to confront them with. Maybe they said something really hurtful to you yesterday and you're trying to talk to them about it. And you know, you try to say, hey, you know, when you told me that I was really ugly yesterday, <laughs> that really hurt my feelings. And they'll say something like, I never said that. You're making things up in your head. They're just, they're lying. And of course that's a form of gaslighting, but it's also a lie and it's a way to stonewall. It's just to, lie about the way you're feeling, lie about whatever the problem might potentially be, lie about what brought up the feelings that the person wants to talk about. Just denying reality is a great way to stonewall people because now you're no longer talking about whatever you originally wanted to talk about. 
Now you're going to go back and forth with an endless, stupid, pointless argument about what reality is. Another way that narcissists can stonewall you is to minimize your concerns, make you feel small, make you feel like you're overreacting, saying something like, I can't believe you're making a big deal out of this. Chill out. Or I can't believe you're still upset about that. That was three weeks ago. Just anything to make you feel like your concerns are not valid. And in fact, they're actually some sort of character flaw. Something's wrong with you for wanting to talk about whatever it is that's bothering you. This is a way that they can condition you to believe that your concerns actually make you some kind of burden, make you selfish or crazy. And this is a really effective way to train you to stop talking about things that are really bothering you. And this can also cause you to start wondering to yourself, am I making a big deal out of nothing? Am I a big pain in the butt? Do I get upset over little stupid things? And, and really start to wonder if your concerns are just as meaningless as the narcissist is trying to make them out to be. And this can make it really hard to communicate about anything that really hurts you because you're being told that you're not supposed to feel hurt by that. Another way narcissists can stonewall you is what I talked about a little earlier and that is to use the silent treatment. The silent treatment is a great way to stonewall someone, but as we are discovering in this video, it is just one way to stonewall somebody. And also the silent treatment is not always meant to stonewall. The silent treatment sometimes is just meant to hurt somebody. It's just a way of making someone feel invisible and unimportant. Maybe to make that person nervous and sit and wonder about what they did wrong. I did a whole video about the silent treatment. I'll put a card up wherever it wherever it goes. Um, and it's been a pretty popular video, but the silent treatment is one way to stonewall somebody. And when somebody is stonewalling you using the silent treatment, they could just refuse to respond. I mean, you might ask them a question or you might bring something up like, hey, I really wanted to talk about our argument last night. Is now a good time to talk about it? And they might just completely ignore you, not answer you, not look at you. They might they might spend a long time just completely shutting you out and not even acknowledging that you've said anything. I mean, that's a pretty effective way to stonewall someone is just to refuse to talk to them. I think this is a really good way of intimidating someone as well, because this is a really effective way to really hurt someone. I think when when you're being vulnerable and, and you're kind of taking that leap of faith to try to bring something up like hey can we talk about our argument last night that's scary that's vulnerable and when that's met with silence and and just this stone wall of nothingness it really makes us regret taking that little leap of faith it's a real slap in the face of silence and it can build over time into intimidation where we don't want to take that chance anymore. We don't want to take that leap of faith because it hurts too much to live through the aftermath of trying to be vulnerable, of taking those little risks that most of us should be able to take in healthy relationships and build trust with. But in a narcissistic relationship, when we take those little le leaps of faith, we actually just build more distrust and more fear and intimidation. Another way narcissists can stonewall you is just to give you non-answers, to kind of answer your questions by not answering them. Like, let's say you've been in a serious relationship with someone for a couple years and you want to get married and this person just doesn't want to talk about getting married or, or just won't talk to you about how they feel about getting married. And when you try to bring it up, like, hey, uh, do you think we'll ever get married? How do you feel about that? I kind of want to get married someday, you know, and you're trying to fill them out and they say something like, well, we'll just have to see. Or, well, relationships just go through their phases kind of naturally. And, you know, if it's time, it's time. Things will happen in their own time. Or they might even say something like, well, can't we just enjoy today and let whatever happens tomorrow just happen? I mean, these are all non-answers. I think for this kind of conversation, a mature adult should be able to sit down and tell you, um, I don't want to get married 
or I have mixed feelings about it, here's how I feel, or maybe I want to get married, but maybe in a year or two from now, I just don't feel ready right now. A mature adult should be able to talk to you and communicate about how they feel without making you feel stupid for bringing it up or making you feel like they aren't willing to answer your question or this space where you just don't know where you stand with your partner and your partner isn't willing to clarify it with you. Another great way to stonewall someone that narcissists love to use is blame shifting. So when you're trying to bring something up like, hey, when you insulted me in front of your brother yesterday, it was really embarrassing for me. I really felt stupid and like I couldn't say anything with him there. Can you not do that? Then they might come back with something like, I can't believe you're bringing that up after you forgot my mom's birthday. I mean, you're the one that's really selfish and forgetful here. You think that what I said was a big deal after you forgot my mom's birthday? <laughs> Or maybe you say, hey, when you were on the phone with your ex-girlfriend for two hours last night, that made me really uncomfortable. Then they could turn it around and be like, oh, I see that you're Facebook friends with your old boyfriend from high school and that's fine. I'm supposed to be okay with that. And you know, there's a million different ways to take the focus off of the narcissist and suddenly put the spotlight on you. You're the one that forgot my mom's birthday or you're the one that's still Facebook friends with your ex-boyfriend from 30 years ago. And now we're just talking about everything wrong with you and the narcissist doesn't have to talk to you about what they're actually up to. This is a this is a stonewalling technique that they're really good at and they're really happy to use because this is something they want to accomplish anyway, is making you the bad guy, making everything your fault, putting the focus on all of your bad behavior or turning your normal behavior into horrible crimes. Then you kind of live in this feeling of like, well, who am I? to try to talk to him or her about the way they've hurt me when I am such a horrible person myself. And another way that narcissists love to avoid communication and stonewall you is to turn themselves into the victim. Like, I can't believe you're bringing this up after you know that I'm still going through a lot after losing my mom five years ago. I can't believe that you would want me to talk about some comment I made to you yesterday when you know how much I'm still suffering. Or I can't believe that you're focusing on this one thing I said to you after everything I've done to you. I knew that you wouldn't appreciate any of the stuff I've tried to do and you would just focus on every little wrong thing I do or I knew that you would nitpick me and focus on the negative just like everyone else has done and this can again condition you into feeling like bringing up your concerns and talking about your feelings is some kind of crime that even if the narcissist cheated on you or yelled and screamed at you all night last night or, or whatever if you bring it up and try to talk about it, you're the bad guy. You're the one that's hurting the narcissist. The narcissist is now the victim of your abusive behavior because you're trying to bring up these horrible things that the narcissist has done to you. And I think that a lot of narcissists really honestly have twisted the narrative in their head so hard that they actually believe that they're the victim because they feel victimized. They don't want to have to face the terrible things that they've done and they feel like if you really loved them that you would just overlook their bad behavior and you would just accept them for all the terrible things that they do that you owe that to them somehow and if you're trying to push uh, an agenda of getting them to talk about the terrible things they've done or getting them to acknowledge the ways that they've hurt you you're actually the aggressor here. You're the bad guy. You're the one that doesn't actually care about them. You're the one that's on the other team. You're you're part of them that's trying to gang up on them and make them feel bad about themselves. I think a lot of them really believe this and that's why it's so hard to get through this tactic. I mean some of them might even start crying when you try to bring up your grievances, your very valid grievances. And now after coming to them to try to have a conversation about how hurt you are, you find yourself trying to comfort them because now they're the victim. It's important to remember if you're stuck in this kind of relationship that narcissists avoid communication and they use stonewalling 
because like I said earlier, any honest communication can only result in the realization that you're in an abusive, toxic relationship and that the narcissist's behavior is uh, at least 90 or 95% to blame for the very serious problems that you're having in this relationship. The narcissist doesn't want to talk about that, doesn't want to acknowledge that, and the narcissist certainly doesn't want you to become conscious of the reality that you're with someone that isn't willing to work with you, that is exploiting you, that's using you, and that's willing to drop you like a hot potato the minute anything starts to go wrong with this relationship. The narcissist doesn't value you, doesn't care about your feelings, doesn't value the relationship, isn't interested in changing, isn't interested in acknowledging the ways they've hurt you. They want you to just continue accepting their endless abuse, ungratefulness, intimidation, superiority. They, they want you just to continue pretending that everything's fine so that they can stay comfortable in this little bubble they've built for themselves. And when you try to have honest communication with them, you're threatening this little house of cards that they've set up. And, and they just don't have any interest in actually talking about feelings, talking through real problems and the real reasons for those problems because their behavior is the real reason for those problems. And, and this is why you, you really can never convince them to communicate. They don't wanna communicate any more than they want to change. And they, they really don't feel like they owe it to you to communicate because they aren't interested in building a healthy relationship. They're interested in a one-way relationship that serves their needs and their interests. And that's all they care about. They don't care about the way their behavior makes you feel. And they don't care about your needs. And they don't care about what you need out of a relationship. None of that even exists in their mind. So there's no motivation for them to communicate. For a narcissist, avoiding communication, stonewalling you, putting that wall up between you and an honest conversation is nothing but a win-win. It's a win-win for them to avoid communication because you might never realize how bad things actually are if they can stop you from thinking about it and change the subject or get you more upset about whatever new problem they've caused or make you feel guilty for even thinking about it. They're going to avoid those conversations and avoid communication for as long as they can because if things really got bad for them, if you really started to understand how little they care, if you really started to understand the problems without actually communicating with them, then the relationship's pretty much over because they would rather move on to a new person that they can start this whole cycle over with than to try to work with you and make these changes necessary in order to build a healthy relationship. And that's why they're just gonna keep doing this. They're just gonna keep avoiding communication, letting these grievances pile up, pretending that everything's your fault until it all falls apart. And then it's much easier for them to just start over again than to actually try to make things work because being vulnerable and communicating and being honest with someone, just it's not worth it to them. It's much easier to just start over. And if you take nothing else away from this video, I just want anyone in this kind of situation to really understand that you are not being a burden when you try to communicate, that you're not being a pain in the butt when you're trying to talk about things that have hurt your feelings. I mean, there are responsible, mature ways to bring up things that have hurt your feelings, but you have a right to do this. You have a right to talk about what you need out of a relationship when you're in a relationship. There's nothing wrong with that. And narcissists will do everything they can to convince you that you're a burden, that you're overreacting, that you're being silly, that you're being a pain, that you're actually hurting them when you try to bring these things up. And I just want you to question all that and realize that you have a right to communicate in a relationship and that stonewalling is the narcissist's problem, the narcissist's fault, that the narcissist is the one in the wrong when they are refusing to communicate with someone that's trying to build a relationship with them. I hope this helps. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment below any ideas you have for me for future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this video and would like to see more like it in the future. Until next time, thanks. Bye.